Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissHandLog.com. Hey, I'm back here at the HandTech. <laughs> uh, this one's going to be about the software on this. So, I was going to do a different video today, and I'll do that. I'll try to get that out tomorrow on uh, the buck converter, designing buck converter. But on this one, what happened is I was looking at the software that goes with this. I just showed a little clip on my review of this meter. Well, I've got a couple USB scopes that I'm going to give away on the channel, okay? So, I want to review those, and I thought, well, heck, I ought to at least play with the software on this so I can kind of see what these, uh, you know, USB softwares do. And, in essence, this is like a USB scope. You know, if you, have, if you don't want that little screen, you want a big screen, then it, use it just like a USB scope. Use it for connecting, and put it on your bench, connect up your stuff, and then use your laptop to, uh, you know, for the big screen, right? Well, so I wanted to look at that, and as I get into these other USB scopes, I can see the difference between those and the software for this. Turns out the software for this guy has even more features than what's on the device itself. That kind of surprised me. I thought that I was hoping it would have at least all of the features, uh, and I was going to come up with some kind of grading system, like you know, one to ten, so I could grade these different USB scopes. The software for this, man, uh, I'm going to have to come up with a grading system, okay? But it's going to be graded pretty high because it actually does more than what you get here. And there's more options, like there's different ways to do the same thing. So you have your options of pulling down menus or turning knobs. You know, I mean, there's visual knobs on the screen. Let's go take a look at that and you'll see what I mean. And so here's what we're looking at this is really cool over on the right side it looks like an oscilloscope you got your horizontal your time provision you can click this and you can just go select one or you can just grab the dial and you can spin it around so yeah different ways to do the same thing pretty cool so I'm gonna go to or I don't know I'll go right there and then you go YT or you can go XY so uh, that's really cool. You could do that on your scope. And then the vertical, same thing. You can click on these arrows up and down. One volt, two volt. Uh, you can grab the dial, move it around. Uh, AC, DC, ground. And wow, look at that. It actually has a C, C, it has a current probes in here and everything. So. You can just select a current probe or you can select all these different voltage probes. So yeah, there's a lot more stuff going on in here than the scope uh, handheld meter itself. The trigger is right down here. You can go to edge and auto or normal, channel one or channel two, and plus minus or both, okay? So this is a lot like this scope. Now up here on the top, you see the tabs. We're on the DSO, the digital storage oscilloscope. And then you have the generator. And then you have the DMM, your multimeter, okay? Now see how it's just storing all these waveforms? Uh, that's because it's play buttons on. So pause it. And you don't store a whole bunch of data. Or you can just sit there and let it run and, and you know, you can always save all this data and then you can plot it out if you want to. So you can see the curves in that. And then down here, you can select what you what it is that you're measuring. So diode, there's continuity, resistance, capacitance. So you can do everything you can on the multimeter. Now, here's a generator. Uh, let's just go ahead, see the on off? It's on a sine wave. It looks like it's... Is that one kilohertz? And to, here, let's turn it on so it highlights things. Yeah, one, one K, two volts. You know what? I'm gonna change this to one volt just because I wanna show you something here. Something pretty cool, I think. And I'm just gonna go to uh, 20 K for the heck of it. So 20 kilohertz. And then you can select Hertz or megahertz. So we're going to go to 20 kilohertz. There's our wave right there. 
Now, you have the auto setting right here. You can all set up and uh, it's kind of like on the scope. It takes a moment. I'll just hit it just to show you. All right, so uh, it's, yeah, it was set up already. Uh, now, here, let, what I want to show you is these tabs across here, the HVT, that's horizontal. So if I hit this, it's just the same thing as over on the right side of the menu when we're looking at the scope. Whoops. Hey, let's turn on the scope so we can see that. Okay. Okay, there's the vertical. You see that? It's the same thing as on over here. Bandwidth, invert. Same kind of selection. Channel 1, channel 2. So, yeah, it's all the same things. Uh, there's a horizontal. You can set up, here's your, your roll mold. And I guess that's new because I don't see it over here on the side. So, uh, it could be that when you drag, here, let's try something. When you drag this all the way to something really slow, let's see. Yeah, I don't see it on the dial. Maybe when you pull this down. Yeah, I don't see roll mode on this. Yeah, so that's interesting. I only see the roll mold up here. Here, I'm going to hit the auto set now that I kind of messed up everything. Now, right now, see the trigger up here in the left corner? So we can, let's see what happens when the auto set finishes. I think it finished. Oh, there it goes. No, that's the signal I just... Okay. There's the 20K. There's the DSO. All right, so it's all there. I don't know what was going on there. But yeah, see the trigger? You set it right here in the middle. You can see how it shows double arrows. You can grab it and move it that way. Now, it see, there is a little bit of a lag each time you do something like this. And see up here, the screen, there's a little square wave. I think that means that we're triggering on an edge. So, but it's really the only option on that trigger menu. And it says it's triggered up here. Over here on the right side, it shows the triggers on channel one on the rising edge. And it's set at 94 millivolts. You can see it right here. So then down here in the lower left corner, it just shows we have channel one turn on 500 millivolts. So, and then on the lower right corner, the time is 10 microseconds, which is up here. So it just shows all our settings in the window. And you can turn on your dots. And then you just get these little dots like that. Or you can turn on the, the vectors. Okay, so this is your reference setup. So you can... Uh, save some waveform to your reference and you've got locations where you can save these uh, that's all the same as on the scope uh, review so it's just interesting that you have different menus up here but you do have the roll mold up here so that's interesting now up here the view see we got all three toolbars turned on and set up you got your reference, your math, your trigger, vertical, and horizontal. Uh, so you can go up here and set it up as well. You have intensity and background color. That's interesting. If you want to print this out, but you don't want to take a whole bunch of black ink, then just come up here and hit white. Now with the yellow, that's hard to see, right? You'd have to change the color of that. Okay, so we'll go back up to black I guess I mean for that matter blue maybe looks nicer to your eyes so you can change it to blue screen if you want okay so uh, let's just leave that on blue for a moment and here's your intensity scale there's your waveform so 
turns it dark, highlights it, and then you got your grids. So now cursor, you can type to channel one or channel two, just like you could on the meter. But now we have this type. You can do a crosshair where it just, see right there, you just, then you can move these crosshairs around to where you want them. And so you got this crosshair thing. And then down here on the bottom, it shows the frequency, the time and the volts on your crosshair. Okay. So I'm just going to jump through this stuff. Uh, you can type to a trace. So you can just type to that trace, see the little box right there. So then when you move, like I can just scroll over to right here and it'll just attach itself to the trace right where I was. So that's pretty cool. And then down here shows you your volts. Then you got your vertical and horizontal. Okay. So, you know, if you wanted to put one at the top of this and then, so on these cursors, you tap your finger once on one. And then if I hold it down, I can grab the second one and move it where I want it to. And then I let go and there it is. And then down here, it gives me my time between and also the frequency. So yeah, just a lot of different uh, ways. Now I go, whoops, I'll go to none, turn them off. And then you got measurements. Now this is something that either channel one or channel two, uh, look at the vertical ones. You got a lot more measurements than you did on the handheld device. So you go to RMS and then it's giving you RMS voltage right here. So that's pretty cool because on the handheld device, I didn't see that option. Horizontal, you can see frequency. Okay, what's frequency? Then it adds frequency over here. So yeah, the measure, it's, I think it's pretty neat how you've, you've got a lot more options here. And here's your clear, your edit. Okay, so I'll just uh, clear those right now. Uh, here's your acquire. Now, I'm wondering the acquisition, okay, normal. I, I thought maybe it'd give the roll mold here, but it doesn't do it. Utility, you got your pass fail. If you want to set something up for that kind of test, uh, factory setup language, again, looks like English and, and probably Chinese and then a banner. So some of these things are the same as in your instrument and then you can check for updates and that. So I just want to show you this, but here, another thing on the math, here's a math setup. When you click this, see you can tie your source to channel one or channel two. Uh, you can do plus all these math functions, but you know what? FFT, I was really surprised to see that. Now look at this vertical scale, 100 millivolts. So here, let's change that to decibels. Okay. And channel one, we're a rectangular. You got handing, hamming. So let's just choose one of those guys and scale. I think one X. Well, you know what? Let's play around a little bit. Let's turn this on. And look at that. You got an FFT. Let's go down here and go to 10x, see what the difference is. Okay, if you look over here on the bottom left, it shows 50 uh, kilohertz per division. And yeah, 20 dB per division and sample reach 10 mega samples. So if I go back up here and go 1x, then now I got 500 kilohertz per division. Okay, so you know what let's let's take a look at this now our frequency it was set at 20k all right so let's go back here and instead of 500k what i found is if you change this time right here up oh, see there look 25k and look at this here's 20k peak right there and it's a one volt, right? So it's right there at the line. See this red line? And so I can grab the red line. 
I can pull up. Whoops, I grabbed the wrong one, I think. Okay, let's grab this guy and pull it down here. Let's pull this guy up here. So yeah, it's the reference zero dB would be uh, one volt, which is what we had it set for. And there's 20K. So now let's go back to the frequency and change it to 50K. Delete that other stuff. Okay, looks like 50K is in there. Go to back to the scope settings. Okay, and there's that. I'm going to pull this out of the way just a little bit. Now down here it says 50K per division. And look at that. First division, 50K, right up uh, close to the zero line where that would be one volt. So pretty cool. Now if I move this just one click over. Now we're at 25K per division and we're over here. And then look, it looks like you have some harmonics. So, yeah, I wanted to show you that FFT. I thought that was super cool. All right, so, hey, by the way, what I did is I just took the two uh, times one or the alligator, you know, BNC to alligator probes that came with the scope. I just took one on the generator output and channel one, tied them together, and just looked at that. Okay, but FFT and it's you know it's a different kind of fft there's not a lot of controls you just change the bandwidth or your time base to get the different bandwidths uh but it's usable it looks like you know at least it's something right and yeah it looks like uh, the math menus the the measurement menus there's more of those than what you see here i thought that's pretty cool so all right guys uh yeah i'll have some of those usb scope Reviews coming up real soon, and um, that'll be kind of fun. We'll give those away, all right? And I got a really nice one too. I want to start using on the bench. I'm really excited about that. But all right, guys. Hope you like the video. Hope you like the software. Free, another bonus. So you know, for 180 bucks, and again, you can get this all the way down if you get the lower version. Well, if you want the generator, say 150. You can get the 40 meg, which isn't that much different frequency with the generator 150 bucks I, I think that's a pretty good deal but what do you guys think uh hey i want to thank my patrons for all the support you become a patron for as little as a dollar a month uh i'm going to come up with some cool patreon things to uh give out to the patrons i usually i've given away some meters and i usually give extra meters away to my patrons um just because i haven't come up with anything yet to to really, you know, do for them. So that's what I do. But I do have some ideas, uh, maybe some papers, some uh, calculators, some things like that that I'll, um, you know, spreadsheet kind of things, some design, how-to design notes. And and someone came up, Fried Mill came up with an idea. Maybe I do some classes on my on my Patreon. So that's a cool idea too. I don't have a lot of patrons, but hey, you know, still be kind of cool. So. All right. Hey, thanks guys for watching. Thanks everybody for watching videos, supporting, and you can support the channel for free. With a thumbs up. That helps the YouTube analytics and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it really does. But all right. Thanks guys. Let me know what you think of this guy. And uh, it sounds like some people have had experience with it and it's been a good meter. So all right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.